Arts and Actions Inspiring Artist Series. I am Maria Sasha Khan, Mentor for Youth Arts and Action. Today I'm interviewing Tamara Rojo. She's a prima ballerina with the English National Ballet, as well as its artistic director. And I'm going to be speaking to her today about what it's like to be in both of those roles at the same time, and especially as a woman, which is very, very rare in this uh, culture of ballet. Mm -hmm. And so that's my first question for you, is I wanted to ask, how did you develop the characteristics that are necessary to become a female director in what is traditionally a male role in the ballet world? I have to say, my biggest influence was my father. My father from the beginning had a uh, huge trust on my abilities. Okay. And when I expressed my interest in potentially being an artistic director, mm -hmm. he he helped me a lot in preparing. Um, after that, there were also other directors and um, that helped me, other female directors that helped me. Uh, one was Assis Carreiro. She okay. introduced me to the Dance East Rural Retreats for Leadership in Dance. Okay. Um, and also she offered me um, like a scholarship to be able to go and shadow Karen Kane, Artistic mm -hmm. Director of National Ballet of Canada. Um, and I wanted to particularly uh, shadow Karen because like me, she was quite a renowned ballerina first and then she became the director of the mm -hmm. company she had been dancing with. Mm -hmm. And I understood that there's a certain amount of... Uh, uh, th there's a dynamic that you need to understand when you are dancing and directing. The relationship with the dancers is different. Um, there is no distance. You're with them in the studio every day. You're with them on the shows. Mm -hmm. um, you share... Um, what they're going through. And that's a positive, but it's also um, it's something that you have to uh, manage with a bit of subtlety. Right. I wanted to ask you how yeah. you found that, actually managing the balance between being someone's colleague and as well yeah. being their boss, in essence, and yeah. you know managing those dual roles. So did you find it difficult when you first stepped into the position as artistic director? I did. Um, I thought I had to be uh, probably quite uh, strict Mm -hmm. and a little bit unfriendly. Mm -hmm. I thought I needed to create real distance. Mm -hmm. uh, but slowly I realized that that wasn't necessary, um, that there was a clear idea of who I was, mm -hmm. um, that I was in charge, and I didn't have to prove it in okay. a way. That, mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I feel that now I am a lot more myself, mm -hmm. uh, although I'm not what I was when I was just a dancer, which I was a more, much more um, huggy, and warm character okay. um, that um, that you have to be a little bit more aware that mm -hmm. you can't just give hugs to people yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because you're a tactile Mediterranean person. <laughs> um, so that I need I needed to adjust, okay. um, and I went a bit too far at the beginning, okay. and I think now I, I finally found a happy medium. <laughs> And did you always want to be a directress? Was this something from a young age you aspired to? Not at all. I just wanted to be a dancer. Um, okay. I, what I found is through my life, dreams kept moving away from me. Oh. Um, so I would dream that I wanted to be a dancer. And as I was becoming a dancer, my dream would change. And then I wanted to be a dancer at a particular ballet company. Mm -hmm. And then when I was achieving that, then I wanted to be a principal dancer in that company. Mm -hmm. And then I wanted to do certain roles. And, then, and it was only when my level of international recognition reached um, a certain level where um, there, were, um, there was a change of attitude in my home country in Spain. Okay. Uh, and there were certain expectations that because of what I was achieving outside, um, that potentially I could one day return to Spain and help with the fact that there isn't a ballet company. Mm -hmm. And that we lost a very rich tradition that we used to have. Mm -hmm. Um, when I realized that, I, I, I mean, I realized that because one day I was sitting in front of the president of Spain explaining to him what was needed to create a ballet company. Mm -hmm. And, and he didn't know, like he, d he didn't know what it took even to... No, they, they wouldn't know. I mean, yeah. what would a president know that? Yeah. They wouldn't know. So, um, so I suddenly panicked because I thought, well, what, this man can make it happen tomorrow. What happens if he does? I can't let everyone down. They've been waiting for this for almost a century. You, you, you know, you, if this is the opportunity, I have to be good at it. And mm -hmm. thankfully, it, it didn't happen, mm -hmm. uh, which gave me time to yeah. really consider how I wanted to do it, how I wanted to learn how to do it. Mm -hmm. And um, and as I say, 
um, follow a path of learning to a, a degree, uh, then go into the rural retreats, then shadow someone else, and slowly fell in a position where I was confident enough to apply for a job. And did you find this sort of way of educating yourself to be a director by yourself, or did someone sort of advise you and say these are the steps you should take? It was quite difficult, I mm -hmm. have to say. Um, there is no clear path to become management right. when you're a dancer. Yeah. People tend to go to business uh, studies, mm -hmm. but that makes you go into more of a, a chief executive or a company manager sort of role, and right. that's not what I wanted. I okay. wanted artistic directorship, mm -hmm. and there are very few paths. And also, um, I have to say, it was a bit disappointing because one of the things I wanted to do was the clore leadership of dance. And when I applied for it um, at the uh, Dance's Career Resettlement Fund, mm -hmm. um, the person that was in charge at the time decided that what they thought I should do was become a teacher. And so, even though I was very clear about what I wanted to do, they wouldn't give me the scholarship to do what I wanted to do mm -hmm. because what they wanted me to do was something else. Mm -hmm. And that is still, I think, a bit of an issue, the perception that because you're a woman, you're nurturing, and therefore you should be a teacher mm -hmm. rather than a director. And mm -hmm. the perception that a director is not a nurturing figure, mm -hmm. I think that's very, very wrong because the biggest part for me is developing artists and therefore nurturing artists whether they're choreographers, musicians, or, or dancers. Um, so I found that quite surprising. I also wanted to ask you, um, I think, as far as I understand, that your background is predominantly, as far as your ballet training, was in the Spanish kind of Cuban style. Yeah. So, yeah? Yeah. I wanted to ask you, what do you think of the Russian style and yeah. the technique of ballet? Do you... Well, the thing is, the Cuban style really is an adaptation of Baganova school. Mm -hmm. So it's very much Russian mm -hmm. training. And it's a training that I still think today is probably the best to give you the basics of classical training. Mm -hmm. um, it, it conveys everything. What I was lucky, I think, in a way, is because in Spain it was a private school set up by a dancer that had to almost self self made himself. Mm -hmm. When he came to, to do his school, he gathered the best of many styles. So we didn't have one style. We mm -hmm. would do a bit of um, Bournemouth. We did a lot of French work in terms of the heads, the hands, the quality mm -hmm. of the footwork. Then we did Russian to get power technique, periods, jumps. Mm -hmm. um, then he brought in Cubans because it, will, it, it fitted more our character and our way of working. So the good thing is that by the time I finished, I had a very strong technique, but an understanding of many different styles mm -hmm. and many different ways of of seeing Bali. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of your, I think, most important coaches and mentors is Loipa Olaho, yes? Yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, who is Cuban. Yes. Yes. And uh, how, in what way did she begin to mentor you, or how did you first meet her? I first and, uh, uh, developed this relationship. Yeah. You know, that when I was young, I used to use my holidays to travel around the world and take class with different people. Mm -hmm. And I found out she was teaching at La Scala. So I, I contacted La Scala and said, I have two weeks off, can I come and take class with you? And they said yes, which was very nice. So that was the first time I took class with her. And I completely felt in love with the way she coached, the way she taught, mm -hmm. how good I felt mm -hmm. as a dancer. And then, um, she was invited to the Royal Valley School to te teach class and as soon as I knew she was coming I asked her please also come to my rehearsals and that's how we started okay. to have uh, development and then I would travel to Cuba to prepare for particular things for the World Ballet Festival, uh, for particular galas, for my first Nuria from Cuba. Mm -hmm. I would just go there and travel, with, uh, travel where she was and work with her for two weeks. Okay. And so she, she has become uh, my most influential mentor and coach. Mm -hmm. And I do, uh, and that's why when I, I got this job, I wanted her here, not just for me, but for everyone else, yeah. to be able to experience how, what a wonderful teacher she mm -hmm. is. I also wanted to ask you, because um, being in the position of being a director and dancing, how do you balance um, 
fitting it all in. I mean, yeah. there's so much to do every day for just one of those roles, yeah. and how do you, you know, manage to do everything and do it so well? Like, well I'm not sure how so well. <laughs> when I, look, I don't understand how you can do all of these things in one day. It's very long days. Okay. Very long days. I start at 8.30 with uh, fitness training, mm -hmm. then I do class at 10.15 with the company, then I do my rehearsals of whatever ballets we're doing, and I tend to finish around 2 p.m. Okay. And then from 2, until whenever mm -hmm. I'm the artistic director. Okay. And very often I never really, never really finish before 9 p.m. Okay. Uh, but very often I finish at 11. Okay. And I have events and dinners and I right. have to, you know, I have to do networking as well. I have to go to the launches of the creative industries. I have to have meetings with other people. I have to have dinners. So most of the time I'm away from my home for 14 hours a day. Oh my goodness, wow. Yeah. That's very impressive. <laughs> well, thank you. I don't know, it's, um, I knew it was going to be like this. But mm -hmm. I know also that it's not going to be like this forever. That I'm not mm -hmm. going to dance for very much longer. Okay. And that... Um, hopefully, when I give up my dancing, then I'll, I'll come back to a more manageable, uh, okay. social friendly <laughs> time scale. Okay. Of things. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you have some advice that you have, uh, you know, for example, if you look back in your career and sort of the, the bulk of what you've learned, what you've achieved, what do you think has been the most important thing that's guided you through that, that you could perhaps pass on long to others who are now coming up as the next generation? I think, for me, um, the thing that has came motivating me is curiosity. Mm. Um, and I think that's something that, as you get older, you can't lose, you can't become a cynic. You mm. can't ever think, oh well, you know, that's the way it is. That answer it was never good enough for me. When mm -hmm. I ask a question, if someone said to me, that's how we've always done it, or that's how the way it is, I knew there was another reason behind it. Mm -hmm. So I would recommend to feed your curiosity, to, to research a lot, and to be open about the fact that there is no absolutes in art, that there are many different ways of doing things, and that um, traditions are to be respected and they are to be understood and known. You, you must understand your tradition, your history, mm -hmm. so that you can break rules, mm -hmm. so that you can be creative, so that you can take this tradition forward. Great. Well, thank you very much for your thank time. You. And uh, like I said, I find it very inspiring, everything that you're doing, and your vision that you're accomplishing. And so, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Maria. Thank you very much. So, this has been Youth Arts in Action's Inspiring Artist Series, and uh, this is Tamara Rojo, and I'm Maria Sasha Khan. Thank you very much.